everybody here with my third Maddie's Nutrition Mailbag. We're going to start right at 1230, give some people some time. Today's topic is meal planning, meal prepping. So I have a really great resource for you guys um, that you can use. And I can link the, the form for it too that you can print out and use. But um, it's a really great resource for coming up with different um, meal prep combinations um, for meals that you actually you know look forward to and enjoy. So. I'm excited to share that with you all. And when you join, I want to hear everyone's response or if you're watching this later after it's posted, I wanna hear what, if you could be quarantined with one food, what would it be? I didn't think about what mine would be, but I think now that I'm thinking of it, I think it would be sushi or pizza. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, <clears throat> As usual, I wanna remind everybody that I have my virtual office hours on Monday and Tuesday mornings from 9.30 to 10, and then Wednesday and Thursday afternoon from 3.30 to 4. Um, I will post um, what, what the number is that you call in, but I'll say it right now as well. So you, you just dial in 701-802-5073. Um, and then you plug in the dial code, which is 114979. But I will comment that on this video as well. So this is for anybody who just has any, if you have any specific nutrition questions, it can be anonymous. If you have any nutrition concerns at this time, uh, I have lots of resources on food banks, food pantries, things like that or you just wanna check in and say hi. I have lots of resources for kids too, for physical activity, things to do with your kids, to continue to get them to try new foods, eat their fruits and veggies, things like that. I'm also doing Wednesday night Zoom classes for kids. So you'll see me post on the Why Without Walls Facebook group. I do those on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. So your kids can, they're completely free. You and your kids can hop on and join that Zoom call. I'll do some sort of physical activity component or and or a nutrition component. So we'll do yoga together and then talk about, you know, different ways to, to eat fruits and veggies and why they're so good for us, things like that. So the first question that I've been asked over the past week is um, vitamin D. This is a good topic for today because it's rainy out. You know, we know that we get we can get vitamin D from the sun, but we live in New England. So so what happens when it's overcast out or if it's rainy or, or winter, you know, we're not getting enough vitamin D from the sun. Where can I get it from foods and how much do I need? <clears throat> so. Vitamin D um, isn't present in a lot of foods. Um, we can get it from fortified milk products. So from milk, a lot of the times it has uh, vitamin D added to it. Or if you're a lot of like so, uh, plant-based milks also have vitamin D as well as some juices. So like orange juice sometimes does. So check that out. Um, yogurt has it as well. You can get it. You can get a little bit from mushrooms. Um, egg yolk also is a good source of vitamin D, as well as fatty fish. So like salmon, tuna, sardines, uh, you can get a cod fish oil supplement that has, that's a really good source of vitamin D. And some, some cereals are also fortified with it as well. So we need 
around 600 IU, international units of vitamin D. <clears throat> when you look at the nutrition facts label, when you're looking for vitamin D, it's gonna be in micrograms. So 600 IU is equivalent to around 15 micrograms. So a one egg yolk can give you about 5% of that. A cup of milk can, can, can give you about 15% of your needs, your recommended needs. One serving of yogurt, so two thirds of a cup can give you 20%. A can of tuna can give you 12%. A regular um, 3.5 ounces of salmon can give you, it depends on what, what kind of salmon, um, if it's farm raised or, or not, um, it can give you 32 to 125%. So that can be a really good source. Uh, the cod liver oil that you can get over the counter, um, one teaspoon can give you 56%. <clears throat> and then a cup of mushrooms gives you a little bit. It can give you 1% in a cup. And then 20 minutes in the sun daily, you know, on a sunny day, you know, as it's getting warmer out and we're, we're moving into spring, um, 20 minutes of sun daily can give you um, enough vitamin D as well. If you're, if you're wondering if you should take... Um, a supplement, I would recommend, you know, talking to your doctor first. If your doctor determines that you're vitamin D deficient, then they might recommend that you take a supplement. But I always say, you know, food sources are, are best. If you can get it through food, food before a supplement, that's always <clears throat> good. The second question that I've received is, is there a difference between sea salt, uh, table salt, kosher salt, and pink Himalayan salt? <clears throat> when it comes to uh, sodium wise or nutrition, uh, nutrition wise, um, there's not a significant difference in sodium content between those types of those, um, four different kinds of salt. Table salt and sea salt, however, are typically, um, iodized, which means they have iodine added in. Um, <clears throat> we, we need iodine from our diet um, because it helps with um, thyroid function. So we need iodine to help produce thyroid hormones. So um, kosher and pink salt typically are not iodized. Um, and then in terms of like, if they contain other minerals, sea salt does contain trace amounts of potassium, iron, and zinc. So they contain a little bit of extra minerals, um, but we can get potassium, iron, and zinc in, in much larger quantities in, in other foods. Um, pink salt is pink due to iron oxidation. So essentially um, the same thing that causes rust. <laughs> um, and that also contains a small trace amounts of calcium, iron, potassium, a small amount, significant. We can get those, those um, vitamins and minerals from other sources in our diet as well. Other than that, there are no salt, there are no salts that are healthier or, um, you know, are significantly lower in sodium than others. Flavor and texture wise, obviously there's some differences. So if you want to use like sea salt in cooking, um, sometimes it has a little bit of a better texture. You know, the pink sea salt always looks more visually appealing. So there, there are differences in terms of that. So for people who are hopping on now, feel free to comment what your, if you could be quarantined with what food, what would it be? Um, so we're gonna hop into the topic of the day, which is meal prep. So um, when I think of meal prep, or I think when a lot of people think of meal prep, they think of like boring, like maybe baked chicken with rice or broccoli. But it really doesn't have to and, and shouldn't look like that if that's not something that appeals to you. I think when you correctly meal prep, you can make some meals that are really satisfying, really enjoyable, something that you really look forward to eating and having. You know, it doesn't have to be boring or bland. Um, meal prep can really kind of set you up for success for your week. It can save you time. It can save you money. It can save you from that moment when you get home from work and you're starving and you just end up eating something that's unsatisfying or something that doesn't make you feel good. Or it can keep you from, uh, you know, when you're driving home from work and you realize that you don't have anything prepared at home, so you stop at a drive-through and get something. So here's my resource for you guys. And like I said, I can post this um, in the group afterwards. I'll post my actual form that you can print out and fill out. But I'm gonna walk you through it now. 
So the first thing that you're going to do is list your top five favorite flavors. So this could be like spicy, it could be salty, creamy, sweet. You're going to list out your top five favorite flavors of all time. And don't worry about if they're healthy or not. Next to those flavors that you list out, you're going to list one to two seasonings, spices, or sauces that you like that match that flavor profile. So for example, if I like um, creamy stuff, um, I'm going to list like, I really like tzatziki and hummus or ranch. If I like spicy stuff, I'm going to list buffalo sauce and curry. Um, so you're going to list those out. The next thing that you're going to do is list your top three favorite proteins. So this could be like you know, chicken, if you like chicken, salmon, beans, tofu. You're going to list three of your top five favorite proteins. They can be plant or animal based. And then you're going to list your top three favorite grain or starchy foods. So like rice, pasta, potato, um, bread, tortilla wrap, pita, whatever it may be, list three of those. And then you're going to list your top three favorite veggies. So you have that list. And from this list, you're going to pull each week. You're going to pick for each week. You're going to pick three sauces. You're going to pick one protein food. You're going to pick one of your favorite grain slash starch foods, and you're going to pick one prepared veggie. And from this, you can mix and match to create four different combinations for your meal prep for that week. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Say I picked um, for my three sauces, I picked tzatziki sauce, teriyaki sauce, and pesto. For my protein, I pick grilled chicken. For my grain, I picked quinoa, and for my veggie, I picked sauteed um, zucchini. So the meals that I came up with, um, for meal number one could be a Mediterranean quinoa bowl with chicken, with sauteed zucchini, topped with tzatziki, and I could add in, you know, some cherry tomatoes or some feta on top. My second meal could be like a, a fried rice type dish where with quinoa, chicken, uh, tossed in teriyaki sauce with sauteed zucchini, and then I'd add in like um, a frozen stir fry veggie mix. My third meal could be like an Italian style meal with pesto, chicken, zucchini, and quinoa, and then I could add mozzarella to that. My fourth meal could be uh, a Mediterranean wrap where I could add in the chicken, the quinoa, zucchini, and then the tzatziki sauce. And then I could add in like, you could add in hummus or cucumber or cherry tomatoes, something like that. So I think this is a great resource for, you know, with just those four ingredients, I made four different, com four completely different style meals. Um, and I added in a little bit here or there to kind of amp it up a little bit. But I think that's it's a great resource for making sure that your meal prep isn't boring and um, is something, you know, it's really important that your, your food, that you're enjoying it and that it's something that you really look forward to eating and that satisfies you. So comment below if, if anybody has any questions or you want some other meal prep ideas and I will be back here uh, next Friday for another Maddie's Nutrition Mailbag on uh, Friday, May 8th at 1230. So in the meantime, email me at mvandussen at ymcasc.org with any questions. If you want any more information, I'm here for you. You can message me on Facebook and I look forward to talking to you next week.